Blessings. May the Spirit of God Almighty give you ears to hear. May He sanctify you and strengthen you to obey His Word, obey His will. May He open the doors for salvation when you truly believe on Jesus Christ. So, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You must believe on Christ Jesus. So may he give you the grace and the mercy to follow him. I am Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. I want to get on here and talk about uh, truth and soberness. You know, you are in this life. You live, a, you live this life. This life is temporary. I'm going to just be up front with all this life is temporary the word of god says in james that life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away and that could look like that could look like you may be 40 years old and it may seem like it was just yesterday when you were 16 years old you may be 35 it may seem like it was yesterday that you was 12 years old Life is but a vapor. And then next thing you know, you are 70. By the grace of God, by the will of God, if he allows you to live that long, depending on your lifestyle, whether it rejects God or uh, obeys God and his voice and his will. So your life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. James, I believe James chapter 4 says that. So... Truth and soberness, many people cannot handle truth. The Pharisees and, and Sadducees could not handle truth because the error of their lifestyles. Uh, many, especially the devil, those who behave themselves like the devil, behave and love evil more than good, cannot handle truth. Truth can be weighty. Uh, Jesus says, he who does truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they have been wrought or performed in God. So I was meditating on Acts chapter 26. And so you have uh, Paul who was being charged of, well, falsely accused just like Jesus Christ, just like Stephen, just like many of the, the apostles charged of preaching the way, preaching the gospel of or the kingdom of God. All the above is the way to God. The word of God says the way of the Lord is strength to the upright. So Paul was being charged. He was standing before King Agrippa. And many in verse in chapter 24, it talks about Tertullus accused them and many people as will as being a a true born again believer we will be persecuted and we're gonna come we're gonna come across some people that are wise with their words they may make themselves seem like they know or they are knowledgeable and they know what is right to say and charge the elect or the other uh, or or the True born again Christian. So Tertullus, it says right here in verse 2 of Acts chapter 24. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, accuse Paul, saying, Seeing that by the by you we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto the na this nation by your province. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto you, I pray you that you will hear us of your clemency a few words. For we have found this man, Paul, a pestilent fellow. So he's insulting him in a, uh, a, an a, a, in a subtle way. He's, a, he's disrespecting him and, off and, 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 and offending and insulting him. In, in a subtle way. That's how the devil does. Now, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto you, I pray you that you will hear us of your clemency, if you words, for we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews. So they're trying to say he was 
preaching false doctrine, preaching heresy. All the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes who also have gone about to profane the temple whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands. So Tertullus was accusing Paul of the way being a ringleader of the sect. He was just doing the will of God through Jesus Christ, obeying what he says. So in chapter 26, uh, Paul is standing before King Agrippa and Paul rehearses, well, pretty much tells his testimony how he became changed by the glory of God, changed with a new heart, new lifestyle, chosen vessel, born again. And it starts off in verse one, it says, then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his, the hand of an answer for himself. Now, when we get the opportunity as humble servants of the Lord to preach the word of God, the word of God says in Psalm 19, his testimonies are sure, making wise the simple. So when we uh, minister the word of God with the testimonies of God, what he has done in our lives, and a testimony is evident truth that supports what God has done in our lives and is doing and continuing in doing in our lives. So you can't go against the truth. That's the soberness of God's power on the Christian. We cannot be persuaded by false doctrine or any lie. We must believe on Jesus Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. So Paul has the opportunity to speak. And he says, I think myself happy, O King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you touching all the things whereof I'm accused of the Jews. The Jews was accusing him. Uh, people that, there are people that are not gonna like you when you minister the word of God, but you have to stand firm in the glory, bearing the fruit of long suffering. That's enduring patience. Especially because I know you to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech you to hear me patiently. So he's given honor to King Agrippa. He's not being subtle like Tertullus and saying we found this pestilent fellow of the sect preaching false doctrine. No, he's giving King Agrippa the, the, the courtesy and the honor given to and thanking the Lord through King Agrippa that he has the opportunity to speak. And it says, my manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify the after the most straightest sect of our religion, I live the Pharisee. Paul is letting, the because the Jews was against what Paul was doing for the kingdom of God, he says, I was a Pharisee, so that should tell you a, 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 about 10% of his testimony. He was in darkness. He was under the tradition of men, but until Christ appeared in, in, onto him. Now, he mentions that in verse 14. Matter of fact, verse 13, it says, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all fallen to the earth i heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the hebrew tongue jesus says saul saul why do you persecute me it is hard for you to kick against the pricks or the goads and i said who are you lord so this great light shined on him. He hears a voice from heaven and something is saying, this is the Lord. You see how he answered? He didn't know who it was, but he knew who it was. And I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. 
But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of these things which you have seen and of those things in, you, in the which I will appear to you, deliver you from the people, from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send you, to open their eyes. Listen closely. This is so powerful because this is the will of God for the Christian, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now, he gives the testimony of his conversion. Paul just told them, he told King Agrippa and amongst others who was around him, he says, I was I lived a Pharisee. So he charged the Christians. He he had Christians killed. He 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 didn't he knew the law. He understood uh at his level of understanding the law and the prophets, but yet he had not the Holy Ghost, he had not the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he hated the Christians and he had them persecuted, and he consented to Stephen's death. And he made mention of that. But when Christ Jesus appeared, sp spoke to him by his voice from heaven, that transmitted power of light to darkness. Who is it, Lord? Who, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus of, of Nazareth, whom you persecute. Why do you kick against the pricks? And so it, Jesus converts uh, Saul at the time, his name was Saul, and then before he got converted to Paul, well, he is converted, but his name changed to Paul, the transformation began. And so he tells King Agrippa, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. We are, <laughs> the word of God prophesies about that. We will have dreams and visions. We will see dreams and visions. That's found in the prophet Joel. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and at throughout all the coasts of Judea and them, then to the Gentiles that they shall repent and turn to God and do the works meet for repentance or worthy uh, or for repentance. For these cause Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Now, as I go through, I want to get to a part, a certain part, because when you hear truth being preached to you, and you see, it seems to go against your desires of your heart. You have a decision to make to choose and receive truth and soberness and life more abundantly through Jesus. You have a choice to choose that or to choose your own way of living, to choose darkness and choose the world. So it's Paul is going on and saying, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light to the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoken, now listen to this. This is what Festus, he's hearing all this as well. And he, uh, he spoke this for himself. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself and much learning does make you mad. He think that Paul was not learned of the law because of what the truth he was speaking. And then Paul answers in a humble manner. He says, but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. So the gospel, when you humble yourself before the Lord, you are walking in truth and soberness. Soberness is described and defined as soundness of mind, being in your right form of mind, right from a man, just like the, de the demon spirits that was in Legion. And when Jesus Christ drove them out and they went into the swine or the pigs, they said they found the, the man or the men, because it's in two gospels. One gospel says two men, the other gospel says one man. When he found him, it said he was in his right man, in his right mind. Truth and soberness does that to you. It is truth that when you are 
when a person is filled with demon spirits to drive them out, that's healing for the soul. That's healing for that person. And that is soberness. And you're making yourself available for God's work in you. So what does it say? It says, uh, I got to read that again, verse 25. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. So truth, naturally speaking, can be uh, defined as a statement proven to be accepted as true. That's naturally speaking. Or the reality of a situation. Truth, spiritually speaking, is the doctrine of God, of Christ Jesus and what he did for you and I 2,000 years ago on that tree. The doctrine of Christ, the you know, all scripture is indeed given by inspiration and profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction and instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and furnished unto every good work. So that's what truth and soberness does. The Holy Ghost is to guide you. You can find this in John chapter 16. The Holy Ghost is to guide you into all truth. How are you guided into all truth by the Holy Ghost? You stay in his word. You meditate on it day and night. You worship God in the beauty of holiness. You are like a green olive tree in the house of God. You stay close. Make the Lord. Matter of fact, let me rephrase that. Trust the Lord as your, rep, your refuge and your fortress. God wants man sober and in his right mind. So King Agrippa, he says this after he hears truth and soberness. It says in verse 26, for the king knows of these things before whom also I speak freely. This is Paul speaking to King Agrippa. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For the ki this king was not done this was not done in a corner, meaning this, this is not a made up thing. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God unto salvation to all that believe was not made in a corner. It was just not, it's not made up. It is the truth from Genesis to Revelation. And so King Agrippa says this. He says, now, when you receive the truth and soberness of the kingdom of God, King Agrippa says this, do you believe, no, Paul says this, Paul, he says, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Now, King Agrippa answers and says to Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And as I read that, and some Christians may even think that, why couldn't he not be fully persuaded? Because it would have been too much light. It was too much light given to King Agrippa. King Agrippa says, and Paul, no, Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Because he felt he was in bonds. He was in uh, pretty much arrested at a degree. He didn't feel the liberty to do what he needed to do for the kingdom, but he preached the word. He preached the word instant and season and out of season. And so, and when he had this spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves saying, this man does nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed to Caesar. So God gives grace. He, he, he had, when God purposed a person for to be of the father's business, he makes grace. He makes provision for that person when they believe. So King Agrippa wasn't all the way fully persuaded because it was too much light. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And I love to quote this. I almost quoted almost all my videos. 
what the prophet Daniel said in chapter 2, in verse 22, he, and he was praying to the Lord, he says, You reveal the deep and secret things. You know what's in the darkness, for light dwells in you. He's talking to the, he's praying to the Lord. So when you do the truth, you come to the light. You do the truth, you come to the light and receive the goodness of God and salvation. Salvation is supposed to go forth of your life as brightness and as a burning lamp. That's what Isaiah says. And so King Agrippa was fully, wasn't fully persuaded yet, but he said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. So what does that do? What does that do? Uh, Paul was sowing seed onto the ground of King Agrippa's heart. Now, King Agrippa, he was a king, honorable, but to uh, what kind of heart did he have? I'm unsure, but that the seed of the gospel was sown in King Agrippa's heart. So the Lord was going to do something. I don't know after it doesn't say that King Agrippa gave his life to Jesus after hearing that the truth and soberness, or he may reject it. I don't know. It's, but the truth of the matter is when the gospel is being preached, you have, the, uh, that is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation to hear truth and soberness. What is soberness in the doctrine of Christ Jesus? The fact that you have to repent of your deeds that are contrary to the will of God. You have to forsake your life for Christ's sake. It is, this may prick your heart, but you need to understand that you're going to die one day. You got to understand that you're going to stand before a God who is holy, who is just, and who is angry with the wicked every day, the word of God says. But yet, God is merciful. He is rich in mercy. His mercy endures forever. He desires not man to perish. But that's why he gave his only begotten son into the world, sent himself, born from a virgin, and then those that believe on him and his perfection will have everlasting life. And everlasting life is granted to anyone who believes and forsakes the darkness or the lifestyle or the, the lifestyle of the world, ultimately lifestyle of the devil. So Jesus Christ made a way for you to spend forever with him. He wants you to spend forever with him. And it's for the glory of God. The word of God says in uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, I believe. Let me see. I think it's 5-7. This 5-7 it says, give me one second. Five seven. Cast nope, it's not five seven. It is I think it's four, chapter four. Uh bubble. Let's see. One of these chapters. Seventeen. Where I was seeing that is. If I can find it, the Lord allows me to find it. But it does say that let us grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. So it's the will of God for you to grow, to abide in Jesus Christ, to abide in the Son of the living God and obey his voice. Because Jesus says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So you are, we are living in the, in the New Testament. So we have a Redeemer available for your life. When you make that necessary choice for your life, you are saying to God, I am available for you, for you to do whatever you will. And I am wanting to make this necessary sacrifice. And to obey is better than sacrifice. So Obe obedience is more weightier than sacrifice or good works. Obedience to Jesus Christ matters because Jesus was perfect unto the Father. He says, my meat is to do the will of my Father. And guess what? He has done so. He has completed. He has finished the work. 
by his death and resurrection and uh, of what he done for you and I. He died, he was he was alive, and then he was dead. Behold, he is alive forevermore, and he's coming back at an hour nobody expects. So make your calling and election sure. Receive the truth and soberness of God Almighty and Jesus Christ. Believe on what you read in this word of God, in this Bible, because it is absolute truth. 100%, no flaws at all, truth. Let the truth set you free. And Jesus Christ is truth. He says, I, I, he says this, and um, the truth will set you free. How does that go? I forgot how that goes. As many times that I read that, the truth will set you free. I think that's in John chapter 7. Well, I couldn't even say it's John, maybe John chapter 8. No, it's John chapter 8. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So that, that is, he's speaking power right there. He is speaking power of freedom and liberty in Christ. So... They answered him. I got to read this because in this chapter, Jesus Christ, <laughs> he makes the uh, the Jews liars, the, uh, the Jews and the Pharisees liars because his doctrine was letting them know that what you're doing, you are living in error. He says, we no, they say we be Abraham's seed and we never were in bondage. To any man who how you say you shall be how do you say you be you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily I say to you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So he's describing himself as the truth, he's describing himself as soberness for God to make. A way of escape for your life to receive his son and everything that he said and doing, he's making himself available. Hey, I am the Messiah. He's not saying verbally, I am the Messiah or I'm the coming of the just one. No, he's making it plain as day by his actions and telling them because the, the Pharisees and Jews were in error. He says, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that. No, let's, let me back it up. He, they said he, they're Abraham's seed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because you, my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. And then here's, here it is. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. They said Abraham is our father. Jesus says to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. What was the works of Abraham? Abraham believed. Abraham obeyed the voice of God. He made a sacrifice, uh, sacrificed his son Isaac, and the Lord stopped him because he saw the faithfulness of Abraham. And the Lord promised to make Abraham a father of many nations. But he says this, but now you seek to kill me. He keeps reiterating that to the Pharisees and the Jews. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. You, did, you do the deeds of your father. He says that again. He has to reiterate this because they not believing, they're, they're like bonded, bondage of their own lives because they said that Abraham was their father. Then they said this to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now, first they said Abraham was their father. Now they're saying God is their father. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither I came of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, you are of your father, the devil. So now he's just revealing him what, the, what he meant by saying, you, sit, you, you were sent to kill me. You seem to kill me. But you want to kill me. But you say, Abraham is your father. Now you say, God is your father. No, the devil is your father. The devil is your father. 
You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abide not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. So when you when you when you walk in this world, when you are of the world, you love the things of the world, you do the things of the world, you are of your father the devil. That's just the truth of soberness. You have to consider where are you going to go after you die? You're going to stand before God one day. You're going to stand before God when you breathe your last breath. However you leave this life, you're going to stand before God and give an account of your life, of your thoughts, of your words, and of your deeds. You're going to have to answer to God on every idle word, every careless word that you have ever said. So when you hear a message like this, when you hear the preaching of the gospel, you have a choice. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That means when you believe on Jesus and trust in him and commit your life your mind and your heart to God through Jesus Christ by believing that the Father has risen him on the third day and he is coming back in an hour no one expects and then get baptized in the Holy Ghost, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, you will be saved. Now, don't just stop there. Jesus says, he who endures to the end will be saved. That means you have to grow as a branch to bear the fruit of his righteousness. And the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, the word of God says. So the tree of life is access to God. You have access to God when you bear the fruit of his righteousness. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, meekness, faith, patience, and temperance. You walk in the Spirit of God. Jesus says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Henceforth, or by this, my Father is glorified that you will bear much fruit, so you will be my disciple. Not only you are a Christian, not only you are born again, but you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You want to learn of him. Jesus says, learn of me. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. I am meek and lowly. He said, whoever comes to me and deny himself, I will give him peace. I will give him rest for his soul. And Jesus is the light of your life. He you should make him the your life and the length of your days. The length of your days is him giving you life more abundantly. So the Lord Jesus Christ, when you hear the preaching of the gospel, you have to make yourself available. Make, yourself, make your calling and election sure. Your heart is on the line. Your mind is on the line. And what you do with the desires of your heart and the... The mindset of how you live is up to you to make the right decisions. The Lord says in Isaiah 26, it says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for in Jehovah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Jesus Christ is everlasting strength. So, the Lord is available. Make your calling and election sure. Fear God. Keep his commandments. Get baptized in the water and the spirit and fire. In Jesus' name. I am Brother Joseph Herbert. This is for his glory.